Hello, hi there, Mike. It's wonderful seeing you today. Here's our G. Here's our D. A. And E. So when we're working on our spider exercises this week, let's just call out notes that we know. G, G sharp, A, B, C. When we go G to G sharp, we know that A is afterwards, then A sharp, then B. Our next note, our first finger here is on a D sharp, and then we have an E, E sharp, which is actually an F, and then F sharp. On this third string, we're gonna have a uh, A sharp, then a B, then a C, then a C sharp, and then we're gonna have a, a F, F sharp, G, and a G sharp. You don't have to go blah, 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 and say out all the names, but every once in a while when you're going through here, you will know that that's a G because it's in your G major. And you'll know that's a G sharp because that's not a G note. That's the best way to learn where notes are. So when we play like a, uh, let's say a, a D major, and then we play a D minor, knowing that a D major has an F sharp and then a D minor has an F for that minor third, it just happens to be you and I talking about what a major chord is and then what a minor chord is. So a good introduction to that was today. A major is a 1-3-5. Gives you a very happy feeling. When you have that G, the B, if you flatten the B to a B flat, you then get a very melancholy sad tune. So minors have a flat three. When we're playing something called an augmented chord, we have a regular third, one and three, and then we have a sharp five. So in the key of, let's say, D, we've got D, F sharp, F sharp, and A. When I play these notes, the D is my one, it's my root, so it's not moving. This F sharp, when I want to have an augmented chord, stays, it's my third, so it is this. This note right here, this A, moves up a half step, and that gives me that augmented sound that I've been looking for. Now, augmented chords are great. Augmented chords move, no matter where you play them, They do the same thing, they pull and push, they move tension. When we're playing a D major, let's say, and we're doing this, and we move just our third, we get that D minor aforementioned with just a flat three. But if we flatten that three and the five, we get our diminished chords. So look at those chords in every key you possibly can, play out the chords you know, like a C major, and then play the C minor, feel that one, three, and then that five, and then flatten that five. There is a diminished chord because I've got my regular, my flat three, and my flat five. All right? So when we're moving through these chords, try and take all the chords that we know thus far, which are the G, C, D, and I believe the A we've gone over. Uh, if not, the D major and the A major look exactly the same. The bar is there, except we're moving just the same way we did with the G major and the C major. Well, when we bar it up, it's doing nothing more than playing a G major and a C major here using our fingers. Each one of those movements make different chords. G, C, this is a A, D. Of course, if I go up, I'm gonna get an A sharp, but then I've got a B. So B is relative to a B and then an E. And if I make that E a minor, I have a B minor and an E minor. So the best way to get chord recognition is to learn how to play the one three five, the one flat three five, the one flat three flat five, and the one three sharp five. It gives you all four of our chord structures and we can start implementing those. On my website, I will start introducing more mandolin chords so you can see a quick 15 minute short on how to produce these chords. It'll look just like this. Our chord of the day is going to be a G7. The G7 is quite like the D7, C7, B7. They all have the root, the G, generally when you have two notes, four strings on a mandolin, one, three, five, and you're gonna have a repeat of some notes. Most of the chords have the root, the G as being the double note. So when you have a G major and you flatten the root, the G to an F sharp, you drop it down a half step. When you play that B, that D, and then G, which is always gonna be there, over the top of that F sharp, the dissonance you get between that G and D makes the ear go, uh, feels light and airy. So 
you'll try the G major seven, and then when you move down the F sharp to an F and continue to play the F, B, D, and G, you get a G seven or a G dominant. G dominant seven is used in a lot of bluegrass because that that flattened seventh tends to lead to be more of a bluegrassy note. The reason being is that note actually is pulling more towards the four and the five than it is like it was with that T-do, that half step. When it's a ta-do and it's a whole step away, uh, let's see. And it's actually, that's a whole step, it's moving away from the four and five. So in the key of G major, we're just gonna move that G past the F sharp to the F and gives us G7. I use those with my chucking notes as a moving chord. So I'd have like a G, C, D, back to G, G7, back to G, G major, C major, D major, G major, G7, D major, C7, back to G major. I could do it like a big old D7. G major, G7, C major, C7, G major, D major, 7, back to G. So you see how the sevens really change the chord? It also opens it up for the soloists, so they don't always have to keep in do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. When you're using a mixolydian mode, you can use that flat seventh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. So when I'm jamming out, if you're playing a, uh, let's see, what was that, D? If you're doing like a, uh, ducka, ducka. I can incorporate that note by going. Okay, so takeaway today, your chord of the day is G7, D7, C7, anything that takes the root goes down past the major 7th and utilizes the flat 7th, which is our dominant 7th. Try your teeter totters this week. Go over last week's episode, make sure you combine that rhythm exercise with this, and then we'll recap next week, and then we're gonna throw a tune at each other and see if we can have fun. I'm gonna do some background chord, chord chucking, and I'd like you to experiment with a little bit of our scale preferences. If we forgot what those are, we're going to be using any note on this fretboard, any key, and doing a whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, giving us... Majors. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Do, re, mi, mi, ho, ho, ho. Okie dokie. It's good seeing you. I'll see you next week. Aloha.